So I want to talk about scrolling web pages in with JavaScript, with CSS, primarily with JavaScript, but we'll start with a little discussion on CSS and how you can scroll things. So this basic page here, if I come over and I click on the H1, what I'm doing is I'm just finding the main element and I'm adding the class list up. Click on it like that. And when I click again, I'm removing the class up. So this is what I'm doing with the toggling. And all this is doing is adding a CSS class which has a transition on it. So if I look in the CSS here, my H1 element um, has the pointer, so, that's so I know how it's a clickable thing. The main element has transition on the transform property. Whatever transforms I do, it's going to be one second and I'm going to ease in. Z index minus one, which makes this go behind everything else, which means it's going to go behind this when it moves. And when I add the class up, the transform that I'm doing is a translate Y, negative 600 pixels. So that means I'm moving it up 600 pixels. When I click again, I remove the class up and it'll go back to translate zero, which is the default. So we click, it goes up, we click again, it goes down. So when you want a slow measured animation type scroll on the page, this is the way to do it. This is the way that you can approach doing it. Um, the little angled numbers here I did as just a fun little thing to show that if in your HTML, if I open up my main element here, you'll see that I've got these data num properties and they're numbered. All my paragraphs are numbered. In my before element, I'm setting the content property, I'm using the attribute method, and I'm extracting the value of the data num. So this number is being placed in front of each one of them dynamically through the CSS. I'm rotating it 20 degrees. So that one is rotated clockwise 20 degrees. And then, oh sorry, number two is rotated counterclockwise. That's the negative 20. And then the odd numbered paragraphs, their before element is rotated 20 degrees the other way. So I'm alternating back and forth between 20 degrees, negative 20, 20 degrees, negative 20. So just to give a fun little effect here. All right, so that is the styles that I have applied right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out here. I'm going to close up this main element here. I'm going to comment out the CSS part. So if we look at the page now, nothing happens. Just the console group command. Um, if you're not familiar with it, this is one of the console commands. Console log is something I use in almost all my videos, but uh, console group allows you to put a bunch of console log statements together, and then you would see them inside of here, and it makes it much easier to locate groups of comments. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of comments, and that's why I'm going to be using these. All right, now, the JavaScript way of scrolling. There's no timing, there's no delay unless you want to programmatically set in a delay, maybe a set interval to make something scroll so much um, every so many seconds or milliseconds. I'm just going to do it as one jump. Now there's a couple of methods that we can use, scroll by and scroll to. Very similar methods. Scroll by, you provide the x and y amounts in pixels that you want to move. These are just integers. So how far do you want to move up or down uh, is the Y value and then the X is left and right how far you want to move. Alternatively you can say scroll to and give a position somewhere on the page where you want to move to. Scroll to zero zero is going to move you back up to the top of the screen. Top left hand corner right here. Scroll X scroll Y it's like scroll by just broken into two pieces and there is an on scroll event so we can add an event listener to the window object which is what I've done here so whenever there's a scroll on the web page, I've got another one that's going to take place. And that's what was going on here. When I was clicking and adding the class up and making this page animate up and down, I was getting these things happening because the page was scrolling. So if I move myself manually up and down, I'm getting all of these console statements coming up. All right, so let's take a look at the actual methods. So I'm going to do a um, window dot scroll and let's do a scroll by method so I'm gonna scroll 
zero pixels in the X direction, but I want to scroll down the page. I want to scroll by, let's say, 600 pixels. All right, when you click on the H1, this is what we're doing. So we'll refresh, click, there we are. An instantaneous jump down the page by 600 pixels. There's still a little bit more to go on the screen, but this is what I've done. I've jumped down instantaneously by 600 pixels. Very useful if you know the coordinates for different things on the page. You want to jump back and forth to look at things very quickly. Now there's some properties. That's why I have the console group and group end here. There's some properties that you should be aware of that you can use sometimes in your calculations and how far you want to scroll. So let's do a bunch of console.log statements here. Okay, first of all, there's the client properties. We've got client X and client Y. Now I need to get these from the event object. These are event properties. This is my click. So when I save this, I refresh. When I click on here, there we are. X and Y, 26147. So this is on the page where the click event took place. So 47 pixels down, 261 pixels over or in this case 179.42, that's where that took place. That is the event coordinates. So that's the client. There is a page value as well. And you can see that uh, I'm getting some uh, comments down here. Uh, page X, page Y, so rel it returns the horizontal coordinate of the event relative to the whole document. So page is within the whole screen itself. And client Y, client X, client Y, within the application's client area. Okay, so let's take a look at these two and compare them. So we have a client and a page quality. There we are. Now these are the same because I was at the very top of the screen. If I come up, now let's say I scroll the page just a little bit. We click again. Now you can see it was the same X position, so the page wasn't scrolled horizontally in either direction, but it was scrolled slightly in the Y direction. And that accounts for this 50 pixel difference. So this is from the top of the visible area. This is the top of the web page. So top of the visible screen. Top of the document. So that's the difference between client X and page X, client Y, page Y, is you're talking about visible screen versus including the amount that you've actually scrolled. Now, if you want to get that, we can, there's another uh, property that you can get offset X and offset Y. Now you need to provide a, um, an element to use this with. So we've got offset height, width, to top and left. We're going to do uh, left, because that's the horizontal one, and then we'll do offset top. Boom, there we go. So the offset of the H1 element, this is how far the H1 element was moved down from the top of the page. So relative to the page, offset top, offset left. So this is kind of... You know, you've got the space that the element is away from the page. You've got the distance where the event took place from the top of the page. You can use these numbers to calculate how far you want to move or how far you have moved at some point. Um, not as useful in this circumstance, but still good to know about. There is a window screen property. So there's a screen X and a screen Y. These ones will give you 
here we are, 980.23. So within the screen, I was 980 pixels over, 23 pixels down. The, okay, so that's the window screen object. And then there's also event. So we can do console. Oh, I already got the console log there. So the event took place further over than the edge of the screen did. The top corner of the screen did. Okay, so we have now um, all these properties that we can work with. Scroll by. And then when this scroll takes place, then we've got the scroll listener that will tell us whenever there's a scrolling. And that's why we're getting so many of these console group messages showing up down here. So this is before, then we scroll, and then this is afterwards, after the scroll has taken place. Um, here, I'm just going to copy all of these. That'll make it much easier. Instead of rewriting everything. There we are. There's our properties. And then what I want to do is a set timeout. I'm going to have a function that runs after two seconds to send us back up to the top of the screen. So window dot scroll we did scroll by already so let's do scroll to now and we'll go back up to the top of the screen after two seconds and we'll open this up a little bit more we can see more of the comments okay refresh that up at the top and we click here we are and then another so we have three here this is the one that happened on the click, gave us our coordinates. Then this is the on scroll event, the scroll event happening. And then this is the scroll event happening again after two seconds. So the scroll event, you can see there is no client X and Y. There's no coordinate on the screen, page or client, where the scroll is taking place. It's the whole window that's moving. There's not one point that you can coordinate, that you can uh, focus on and say this is where the event is happening. It is happening to the entire window. So that's why we get undefined for these. Same thing down here. For the screen, there's no event location, so we can't get coordinates. But we can get the offset. So this is the offset left, offset top, where it took place. And this is the uh, the screen value. So this is the screen value. Same for these two. Same up here. This hasn't changed. Where the window's located has not changed. The event, however, this changed where it took place. So it took place here, and then it took place here. So they're triggered in different locations. All right, so that is the scroll events. We've got scroll by, scroll to. You can narrow it down to scroll X and scroll Y if you want, but those two methods combined with the scroll event with the window at event listener scroll uh, these properties you can use to make calculations um, and they're good for instantaneous moving back and forth and up and down uh, between different parts of the page if you ever want to have more of a animation type effect where it slows down then that's when you go back to just adding and removing classes and use transitions and transforms like this with a time. All right, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will leave this code as a code gist for you in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.